All right, guys, we've brought another guest to the channel. We brought another guest back to the channel. You guys are definitely familiar with this man. It's JD. JD, how you doing, my man? I'm here and I'm working, as you know. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Josh. How are you doing as well? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, tasted defeat for the first time last night. Can't say it tasted too good, but we'll have a chance to bounce back against Jamaica, which is why you're here today for the match preview of the game on Sunday between Canada and Jamaica. So we're just going to dive right into it, JD. We're going to basically just throw it over to you and you can touch on the, the game that was last night. A lot of different storylines just from me looking at the starting 11 and ultimately ending in a 1-1 draw. So take it away, my friend. Um, as you know, Jamaica got a 1-1 one, one draw yesterday. Um, to be honest, we never really expected much because we had a depleted squad for a lot of reasons, but no clear reasons. Because what the JF have saying, that the players, the English players, they never wanted to come. And what English media saying, they cut the guys then because they can't pay for them. And they want to add um, um, local players in because it's less costly. And I want to believe that it's the opposite way against the JFF because I just don't believe in them. So obviously the fans know that I'm going to go the side of the players because they categorically stated that they will come and try to build a chemistry. So they are, they are willing to play. And Mikel Antonio, the last time, he paid his own players playing fear to come here. So I truly believe that these guys want to play. You know, so I, I don't believe in the story. But aside from that, we we played a, a, a strong, a okay 11, where in which we had Richard King. He was one of the better players in the last game against Costa Rica. Um, he started back with Maria pa, Damian Lowe to complete the three there. And in the midfield 4-5, um, you had Javian Brown, Bailey, Will Speedy Williams, that is Devon Williams, and Ravel Morrison with Gregory Lee finished off that. So they tried to be as compact as possible, tried to press high and um, try to um, be more explosive. So they are trying to use the skill set of what Jamaicans are naturally good at. Um, it works for the first five minutes, but after that, you know the El Salvadorians. Their style of football is much more the tiki taka and much comfortable on the ball. But because they never had some of their key players as well, and and at the same time, injuries in this game never went. Um, in their favor, I think he played a big part because when Bonilla came off, it really um, ampered them because he was the one that's pressing our back line to bring their players up. And you have um, Darden Seren. Seren, he was a solid individual, one of the best players in the park. So for the first 45, we struggled um, to take control of the game um and they scored they scored off something what always be our problem in jamaica we seems to have six foot four players and six foot three players but we seems to can't mark five foot and four foot individuals they we seems to just can't mark corners so three corners um consecutive we missed them. And we, I'm talking about clear individuals missed one, two, three players missed the same corner. Then it leads to an next corner. Then um, Zabaleta um, punched it in. But they had a couple chances before that. And we saw that that, were, that was going to be one of the Hercules heel of the team. And then they concede from that. But after that, in the second half, I have to commend them. They stayed stuck by the same attitude. They are going to press them. And hopefully that press will win out overall. And in the 60th minute, we could clearly see that these guys were t were tired, That which is the, Costa uh, the El Salvadorians. And, and it, it paid dividends in the end. Um, Andre Gray got that goal and he looked solid right throughout. He's a limited touch striker and he made it pay when the time come. He got a chance before that he could have done better. But tell you what, Liam Bailey got a, a chance after beating the Kiva and could have put it in the net as well. But I still respect it nonetheless. It was a, it was a, a performance that I would say I respect for the personnel there. And that is the confusion when it comes on to Jamaica. You just don't know what to expect. And, and it's absolutely wild. It, it really is. Because when I was taking a look at this this match, and, and like I think you mentioned, it, it didn't really matter. I don't think there was a way that Jamaica was going to qualify for the World Cup anyways. But it, it's got to be a little discouraging for the fans to take a look at and seeing all these star players that could be there for Jamaica. And none of them make the trip. None of them, like you even mentioned, have the opportunity to start building chemistry for the next competition. So it, it's very interesting. And I think that's what a lot of the Canadians will kind of be interested in because we're obviously we lost last night against Costa Rica. I'm not sure if you watched the match, JD. It was it, it was a match where Canada 
pretty much dominated. They didn't have the strongest first half. They picked up a red card for Mark Anthony K. Costa Rica got a, a late goal in the first half, but being down down a man for the entire second half, Canada dominated, had a ton of opportunities, hit two posts. They got very unlucky not to get a result, and they only needed a one single point, and that would have yes. sent them to the World Cup. So obviously now a lot of the Canadians maybe dealing with their first loss or like, okay, how do we how do we bounce back? We're taking oh, on Jamaica. Taking, taking it out on Jamaica. Oh, see, taking you're, it out on Jamaica. Oh my <laughs> God, Jesus! <laughs> but but I think they're gonna find it very interesting because, like, like I mentioned earlier, I took a look at this starting eleven, which there are some names I recognize, but there's a lot of big names out there. So I guess JD, if you want to just let every everyone watching right now know what type of players aren't gonna be playing in the game against Canada right now, some of the big big names, big stars that could have made this maybe a little bit no, more nerve wracking for Canada. Yeah, the sad, the sad thing here, we have a depleted squad. We talked about Richard King. He's a young kid playing in the JPL. Um, you have Damian Lowe and you have Speedy Williams in that. Those are not the more high-profile players, but you have Leon Bailey and you have Ravel Morrison. Those were the two best players yesterday, and I think they were the difference maker in the game. And I'm hearing that Leon Bailey won't be traveling because um, some documentations um towards going to canada which is surprising i don't know if it's canadians um doing it or something but he's not going to be there that's what they said he's going to be only available for two games and it's the two jamaican games and then ravel morrison a lot of you guys know that he might not be there because he weren't clear for united states and canada for the longest while every single time he should travel there he seems to don't get clearance and i think it's going to be the same again so it's going to be even more of a depleted squad if both of these guys don't travel i think that is i can't even pick a midfield after this because the, ravel morrison is the best midfielder there so if he's not going to be there i, I don't know i don't I, it's going to be very tough for we to contain anything because we never contain um el salvador and el salvador is not one of the strongest teams so i i am pretty much worried for the midfield battle I, I have to be honest and what Bailey added yesterday was so refreshing and to know that he's not going to be there, I think that is, I don't know. I'm going to investigate the Canadian um, embassy. I need to find out what really happened. <laughs> and and those are the players that were involved in the El Salvador match. But what dig a little bit deeper, JD. What about the other players that simply didn't come? Like your, your Antonio, like your Anthony Grant. Like there's a ton of players here that when these Canadian fans take a look at this Jamaican team sheet, they're going to be like, whoa. All right, so you have Ethan Pinnock. Ethan Pinnock, as you know, he still remains one of the better defenders in the Premier League period. Still consistently getting week out, week in, um, maybe called to the best 11 and stuff. So he's doing a good job. Um, I've heard two stories that he was actually called at one point, And um, some, we heard that he was a part of the cast, cast cutting because obviously they think they can't reach anywhere. So they are going to try and bring in most of the important pieces at this point and then bring in the next relevant pieces. Obviously, these guys would be the bigger names like the Mikel Antonio, the Ethan Pinnock, Daniel Johnson, Anthony Grant. Um, but it's just too costly you get me so them bringing in a ravel morrison he would be an in, in, in integral part to it because he will be the attacking midfielder regardless of who being there i think that's what they are trying to look at they them bringing in an andre gray and a leon bailey they are the backbone of the team going in the future michael antoni is 31 so maybe they don't see him being in the next world cup cycle but maybe he's going to be available for the next competition so i think they are trying to look for the long haul and do what's necessary at the cheapest cost. I do believe this is a cost cutting measure. So yet again, I think they have done, the Jamaican fans are done because I think it's a cost cutting measure. That's what they took and that's what cost, you know. So the reason why you don't see all of those big names, it's because of a cost cutting measure, in my opinion still. They say otherwise that they contacted most of them, um, maybe barring Mikel Antonio because he was injured. Remember, he, he was injured in that week's um, Premier League and but they but West Ham released a statement two days later saying that he's going to be fit enough to play the Europa League, which which he was actually one of the best players on the field. So they knew before the selection that he's fit, but they never selected him. So I just don't know. It's a it's just the Jamaica way of never being clear and transparent. That's where I want, I'm gonna leave it. So that's the reason why we are not seeing most of those players. And the few that we should see. Either Canada stopping them from coming to play or they have some history in some history back in the days that 
that caused them not to travel, not to have the ability to travel to Canada. That's the problem right now. And and it seems like JD, every time I, I bring you on for a preview, there's players that aren't available. There's there's situations going behind closed door. It's got to be a very frustrating measure. But just see, hearing some of the names that you're talking about that won't be available is is mind bottling. And I asked JD beforehand to put together his starting eleven. And if you guys have watched Jamaica play, you know what type of players they have with what their starting eleven should look like, which should give Canada a bit of a competition. He struggled beforehand. He struggled putting together a starting eleven. So I'll let him play with it a little bit as I'm going to go into my predicted starting eleven for Canada. And this is just kind of what I would do. I don't know if this is exactly what I think Herman's gonna gonna do, but I think this would be an interesting starting eleven. So I put together a three four three system. Borian and that right wing back Richie Larea. I think that he had a really positive game against Costa Rica. I'd like to see him start again and continue on that. We know he's fresh because he hasn't been playing against Nottingham Forest. Uh, yeah. The three central center backs we got Alistair Johnson and outside right. I think Daniel Henry will come in at the central center back, given that Victoria's fitness isn't quite there yet. Kamal Miller, I think, will remain at outside left center back. Samuel Adekubi will come back in, which I think he was desperately missed. He's been one of our best players in recent windows. He'll go at the left wing back. I think we'll go with the two midfielders, mainly because Kay suspended and Hutch just went a grueling 90 minutes playing down a man. So I don't think he's going to have the back-to-back. So I think Steph's going to start, and then we're going to see Ismail Kone making his first ever Canadian men's national team start after coming on and impressing late in the, the Costa Rica match, which I think those two could complement each other quite well. Then I'm going to go for a front th- three of Tejon on the right. I think I'm going to go Junior Hoylet on the left. I think he's going to have a special moment here against Jamaica and hopefully be able to write a little history for Canada. And then Kyle Aaron up front for my striker, Jonathan David, on the bench. That's the 3-4-3 system I'm looking at. So we're going to throw it over to JD to do his, and then we'll do a little bit of a tactical breakdown and kind of see where the strengths and weaknesses of these teams will lie. Um, for me, um, I think they are going to go back with the 3 Four one two system. I think it works a little bit better because we don't have the strength in depth when it comes down to defensive play. So in bunches, I think we we are much more better. So I will go with um, Andre Blake in goal because he's a better shot stopper, not necessarily a better pass of the ball. I think he has controlled his long passing because he tried six that that uh, last night and none of them was actually on target because that's what you expect when you see him. Um, and I don't think he improves than that. So I, I would still put him back in goal. Then I will put Richard King, Adrian, Maria Pat, Damian Lowe for the back three. Then you have the four across the line. I would put Javian Brown. I think he was horrible aside from the assist. assist. But more game time because they are young players. Um, they might get better. Um, in midfield now, where we have the massive problem. We, are, we don't have Ravel Morrison, so we can't put him in it. So we'll have Speedy Williams, which is Devon Williams. And then they brought on Howell, uh, Ramon Howell. I think he's the one has to come and fill the boot as a defensive central there to make that two and then over the, the, the left hand side which is the left left wing back should be Greg Lee he has been a very good player for Jamaica last night wasn't one of his best um, displays and for my attacking midfielder I have to go back and bring in this kid this kid has been doing a good job um, so far the first time he was a meme following the shot of um, Antonio Mister, um, that is Lamar Walker that was his biggest um, scene on um, the football big scene so that's Lamar Walker but he has put in some very good performances we're in which I do like him I think he should get that role to play the attacking midfielder and up front now i think up front you have to go back with andre gray you can't um substitute goals he brings goals and he brings danger moments all the play strength and stuff so andre gray put it back in and then i will go back with um daniel green daniel green he started out very slow um but he played himself into in 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 the game and i would deploy him as a striker a supporting striker for andre gray so that's my my list in the three four one two system all right jd now we're going to get you to pick two key players one key player from canada that you think can make a difference and one key player for jamaica so if jamaica is going to get a win where do you think the key player is going to have the biggest part and then vice versa for canada all right i have to go with two players because jamaica team is much weaker than the normal standard so i would have to go with andre gray andre gray has to hold up the ball much more because you don't have a, a leon bailey flying up to support him and create space so he has to hold up the ball a little bit more that's the individual that i have to go with andre gray and then i have to go with um ramon owell or speedy williams i will go with speedy williams he has to do a better job he has been one of the the 
the most depressing individual on the field. I can't understand why he keeps getting selection and not doing much. He plays too much safe pass and just trying to be a figure on the field without doing much. So I think Speedy Williams has to turn up and do something in this game for Jamaica to have any remote chance. We can't lose midfields. We lost midfield to every single team. Just pick a defensive midfielder and Jamaica seems to make them have the best game. Anibal Gadai, two games against Jamaica, he's the best player in the world. Um, Sayden, the best player in the world. Um, anybody from... Um, um, and Mark Anthony Key, anyone from Canada does become the best player. Um, Western McKenney, the best player from it just just pick a defensive midfielder. Jamaica makes them the best player in the world. So we have to try a way to sh to nullify those midfield threats. So that's what I'm going to say. Speedy Williams and Andre Gray, I would go with necessarily need to have a very good game, an extremely good game for we to have any chance in this game. I'm very sorry, Jamaican fans. What about Canada? What's the one player that you're looking at of that of the roster that you're assuming is going to play that could stick out and really damage this Jamaican side? Ustakio, because we just talk about defensive midfielders. Ustakio is actually a good player. So imagine a good player turn up against Jamaica when they made average players look good because they are a defensive midfielder. So I think if we can't stop this brother, we don't have any chance of winning the game. If we can't stop him, we can't win the game because that is the problem. We can't, we, we don't play with midfielders. That's why I've, I've put three midfielders in my system to try and stop one midfielder. So stop Ustakio and then we might have a chance. But you guys have Tejan Bokanan that will pose all sorts of threats um, on the wing. You have um, David um, um, as a striker that will press us. And if you don't have David, you have Kyle Lauren as a supporting cast. So I want to say um, you guys have so much good players, we can't pick one specific individual. But what we have to say is Jamaica's concentration has to be elite to get anything or show any good sign in this game because we played against an El Salvador game no it's just one game guys and maybe I'm going over the top and fretting too much but believe me um, we need to concentrate. We need to concentrate against this um, um, Canadian team. They they tasted um, they tasted their first last, and everything. They want to come out and prove a point because they need that extra point, and they are not going to want one point against Jamaica. They are going to come for three points. Yes. So concentration and the cool, I think, will cause Jamaica a lot of problem. Yeah, and, and I agree with your your picks as well. And I'll try to just pick two other ones just. To make things interesting you kind of mentioned one i'm gonna put tejan buchanan for canada mm -hmm. i thought in the first half he was very sloppy he was he looked energetic he put himself in a good position but his first touch put it basically broke up a few plays at a good opportunity he had that final decision making wasn't quite quite there and i i didn't know what kind of tejan we we're gonna get in the second half but we got a commanding one we had one that constantly took on players 1v1 one that was a lot better first touch simply was drifting into the middle becoming a lot more involved in the match he looked really good, and I think that if he can build on that type of performance, knowing that he can run and run riot against this back line of Jamaica, I think he could potentially be in for a good match, whether he plays on the left, whether he plays on the right. I kind of want to see him on the left, just so he's got the ability to, to cut onto his right and take a shot. But I also want to do it on the flip side of things, and, and some of the players that you mentioned, I want to focus a little bit on, on Andre Blake, mainly because we saw what it was like playing Costa Rica with Kaylor Navis and without Kaylor Navis. And we won our first game against Costa Rica because of a goalkeeping mistake. This time was not was not there. Kaylor Navas, world-class for a reason, came up with a couple big saves. Got lucky a couple times with his post, but, I mean, you got to say, you make your own luck. So I think if Andre Blake is going to have a massive game as well, he could potentially get in the minds of some of the strikers yeah. because we yeah. know what a quality keeper he is. So those are the two I'm going to highlight. And then, JD, we're going to go back to the system that I picked, the 3-4-3, which mm -hmm. very well may not be the system. If you were John Herdman looking at this Jamaican side, what formation would you want to see Canada play in that would best cope with how Jamaica will probably set up? Would you add an extra man in the midfield, or do you think that two-man midfield I came up with could handle Jamaica? Um, I think because I I think they are going to go with a similar system to you, which is three at the back and four in midfield. I think um, the best system you guys could go with is uh, uh, four, um, two, Three one system where in which you still have that attacking midfielder that's a free roamer with two defensive centrals. So at least you contain any threat um of the wingers or the slash artificial strikers supporting cast coming in. So you would have one penetrating and passing and dictating the tempo and one trying to map 
when you go over the right or go over the left. So I would think the 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 four two three one would be a massive um advantage in 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 that context still. But if you guys go with the three four um three system. I still think it's going to be a showdown, but I think you would create too much openings. You would give them a much more better understanding because you're mirroring the formation because it's the same formation. Only thing is we have to use an attacking midfielder because we don't have the strength to spread them out and become um, strikers. So they're just playing more narrow. You get me? So I think I, and that will go straight to your midfield because you would only have two in midfield. So we'd have, you'd have an unnecessary pressure that you're putting yourself under. When they could have just easily well put three midfielders because you guys are blessed with midfielders, you know. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So I I think you have to go three in midfield rather than two. But I still think your two in midfield is still stronger than anyone we can face. If field field if we don't have Ravel Morrison because Ravel Morrison seems to have a good patch for Derby County and he has a good vein of games for Jamaica as well. So I wanted him to see wanted to see him against a big team just like we saw him against um maybe a uh, uh, Mexico and you know he, he looks much better he looks like he's much more settled so I wanted to see him much more and I desperately wanted to see Leon Bailey against good teams because one thing I know I've noticed the English Premier League players and the higher level players they look astronomically better than everyone else in the region it's like the football really telling like you have a um a david he looks astronomically different tajan Buchanan, when they do turn it on they look different the quality really shows so we really wanted a quality like Billy to go up against most of your players them to see if we can pose some problem you know yeah yeah and and yeah and it's and it's a shame and it's not it's not super fair for the fans uh seeing that this depleted jamaica side it's almost like they they gave up before it came to a close but it was interesting what you say, and the, the main reason I went with the two-man midfield was because K and then Hutch playing all 90, but you could totally do a 4-2-3-1. If we put in, for example, a Liam Frazier with Steph as your two sixes, you yeah. could potentially have a Zorio and Hoylet as the, as your 10, maybe Buchanan and probably Liam Miller on the wings, and then a striker up front. So it is totally doable. A 4-2-3-1 it has been played for John Herdman, so I'll just throw that little system out there, and we'll get your guys' thoughts and opinions down on the in the comments as well of what system you think Herdman will go with. But J.D., that's all the time we have. So we have one final question for you today. And oh, it's an darn. easy one. It's a simple one. It's the <laughs> prediction. How do you see this thing playing out at BMO Field on Sunday? Tell you what, tell you what. Um, for me, um, I people always said I bet against Jamaica, which is not um, true. I'm just betting sensible. Uh, yesterday, I bet um, El Salvador will, will get the nod 2-1 against Jamaica. Um, and Jamaica proved me wrong because they played much better than what I've expected. So that means the system is gelling. But I, 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 I want to say the best thing Jamaica can get out of this game is the draw. But I don't see them getting nowhere near a draw because the condition, a lot of these younger players coming in um, with this coal and stuff um, from Canada, I... I, I, I Tell you what, Canada will win 2-1. Let me give Jamaica a 2-0, uh, sorry, 2-0 um, yeah. Canada will win. You know, best 2-1. Canada will win. That's what I'm going to say. Guys, Jamaicans, I have to be honest to myself. I can't lie to myself. Canada is one of the better teams. With 10 players, they still dominated Costa Rica. You get me? So uh, they are showing that they are consistent. You have to get something going against them for you to turn up and win um, position. And we desperately need to win position in order to have a chance in the games. So I don't see we winning position. And um, they have the better strikers them. They have the better players them. period, and the field. So 2-0, two 2-1 nil, two best for Jamaica. I'm very sorry. We'll give you 2-1. I'll say 2 nothing. That was the prediction I was thinking. I think nerves will get to them a little bit because this is a big opportunity. But the main thing for Canada is they simply just need a draw. They need one point. I think they're going to go for more like that, like you talked about a little bit earlier. So I'll say 2 nothing. We'll say, we'll give him another, we'll give J JD another 2-1 there. So make it a little bit different. But JD, man, I appreciate you coming on as always. We'll put his link to his YouTube channel in the description as well for any of you football fans and especially Jamaican football fans can go check him out there. So appreciate you coming on, JD. Any last words before we get going? Um, thanks for having me. And uh, guys, remember, this is all about football and we study football. So don't, for Jamaican fans, don't think that I'm always going against the team. It's just because all the things that JFF does, it just always lead into the negative side rather than the positive side. So that's why when we come here, we talk football and majority of the times it goes the way we, we said. So just give me a little respect and don't bash me too much in the comment section. All right. Yeah, thanks all for right. having me, <laughs> No problem, JD. Appreciate you coming on as always. We'll see you next time. All right. Yeah. Take care.
your friends and we'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Thank you.